Guys, my Genoni, here's some comic reviews for you. We have Batman Eternal, Green Arrow, Operation Sin, Squirrels, and Ants. All right, let's take a look at Batman Eternal. This one, I don't know. I mean, there's parts of it I really like, and there's parts of it I don't like. Um, the parts, parts of me that like, I like how the villains are trying to deal with, you know, taking over Gotham. But on the other hand, I'm going. Part of me thinks that there's there's something that's missing, and I think I'm hoping that that part that's missing is coming, but I just don't know where where it's going to be. Um, the Batman Riddler thing that they've got to push that thing a little bit more now. You know, let's get to the resolution as to what's going on with that. Um, and they're finally going back to the Clue Master's daughter and her bounty and where she is. So that part's good. The bad parts that I don't like about it is just the fact that, you know, there's times I think that this book has lost a little bit of the focus of, of the direction where, you know, I don't know where it looks like it was supposed to be going, but I fully understand that, you know, that's filling in some other details and in a way it still is going to circle back to everything and it can't be a single straight line. It's, you got to veer to make it interesting. So I, I can appreciate that. But there's times where I think that, I don't know, it's like, I don't know if I feel like lost or is it that I think it's, like I, said, I just think it's missing something and I don't know what it is. I'm, but regardless, I'm I'm enjoying it, but it's not like, I don't think it's like Snyder's best work or anything like that. But anyways, there's that. Green Arrow, you know, I'm not really going to really trash or praise this book too much. I was, I mean, I realized that this is like, like part four or something like that in the series, but I mostly got it just because I wanted to just see how Green Arrow and um, Green Lantern interacted. And I, I have to admit, I was a little bit disappointed, but keep in mind, my disappointment is, I guess I, what I was ex hoping for was more, but I wasn't really going to get more. And so I'm, I'm okay with it. The story was just all right. Um, the villain was actually pretty good in the sense of how he's able to turn the city against um, Ollie. But um, I don't know. It's Reading this really didn't make me want to buy the book more. Um, like that turn the city against him, they've done that how many times? And if it's not just him, you know, really? So it to me, it's like it's it's a dull story, so... Unfortunately. Operation Sin. Okay, on some level, it's a decent book. I mean, it, there's some really good parts to it. Um, it. It really has... It does not have that 40s, 50s vibe that the TV series has. Um, this, to me, there's too much tech. And it doesn't have the subtleness of how life was like back then. Like the, the um, Agent Carter series. Which is a true disappointment, because I think that's one of the charms of the Agent Carter series. This is, I don't know, you got, I guess you could say it's more fantastical, because you got this giant alien thing, robot, spaceship, at the very end. And I'm just kind of like going, eh. you know, and some people are probably going to love this thing because it is different. You know, compared to what a normal superhero book is, but um, I'm telling you, I'm I'm dropping it. I'm gonna go when I go to comics next week. It's gonna be right off the thing. Unbeatable Squirrel Girl. This was a on a whim by. I was hoping with some of the other Marvel books like Deadpool and uh, Miss Marvel, and. Um, Electra and you know I was hoping that this would have been good in that in that weird kind of way and it is kind of like this really weird funny-ish let's not take ourselves seriously and I can appreciate that I actually like the battle between Squirrel Girl and Punisher I mean not Punisher or Craven because it was clearly that you know Squirrel Girl was not going to beat Craven but she actually just kind of beats him in the sense by asking him questions and so there's some there's a nice little charm to it and um but i don't know if this is something that i would continue buying though 
the art this is gonna be like a love hate probably for some people some people are just gonna hate this artwork and some people are will appreciate it um for me i think the art fits the story the type of story it is because immediately you see this and you know you're not getting this or this type of book which is i think they did the right thing but i just don't like the artwork that much i think part of me thinks that this would look really perfect almost for um an animated series but even then i don't think i'd really if this was like a long-term animated show i don't think i'd watch it but if it was like maybe a two-part 30-minute episode type thing you know i'd watch it that way but um i think that, yeah i just can't get into it this much but there's some there's some decent parts to it but i don't know i just can't i just can't Ant-Man number one. All right. This here is your origin issue, and we need to establish Scott Lang in the Marvel Universe. So this way, people who just saw the trailer and are going to go to the movie know who he is. And it does a decent job with that. Basically, you know, they give you the origin. This is who Scott is. This is what's important to him. They show that he's actually a really decent person, despite the fact he... Uh, got in trouble for theft or stealing and um, basically he's trying to get a job with uh, Tony Stark because you know he needs money he needs a stable home for his daughter Cassie and then his his ex-wife is like a, a you know a very not a very nice person you know she doesn't want Scott to have any dealings with her the daughter and uh, just when things start turning around for him she just packs up and moves and, um, you know, I don't know the legalities of their divorce settlement, but let me just tell you, technically, a lot of a lot of things she's doing just can't. Like, she shouldn't be able to just pack up and leave with no notice. His notice was basically he just happened to stop at her house and then saw them moving. <coughs> so that part I thought, I thought was totally wrong. And it really, if anything, this really gives you a lot of sympathy for this, you know, Scott. Because he really just wants to do make up for his past errors and uh, do do right with his daughter but um you know i don't know if uh, i'll probably get this uh, maybe another issue or two but i don't think i'm i don't know if i'm gonna be in this for the long haul but we'll see the i, th I thought the art was just okay nothing truly spectacular but um it was all right i thought if anything it was a they did a much better job in terms of developing who the character who scott is than ever, anything else in this book anyways that is some reviews for you today uh don't forget i do a podcast with con freaks and geeks and then i'll put the link down below and um we'll have some more reviews later let me know what you guys uh got this week what you liked what you didn't like and we'll have some more reviews and stuff later so until next time